Echoes is a pretty good soundtrack. Nice and relaxing. And again, I'm not even using dithering, because that's also a nice big thing about... That's also a nice pro tip, which like even just painting in general, is you don't want to immediately start blending. So, you know, in pixel art's case, dithering. Because if you just dither all over the place, you'll lose track of where the planes will be. Like, where the actual... Where the actual dark sources are and where cracks and crevices will go into so you want to at least begin with a basic basic tone check well not tone check but just a tone setup where you know exactly where the shadows are most of the shadows are this direction and most of the lights are another direction. And you want to bolster that as much as you can so you can give that good big sense of lighting. Push the darks darker. Push the lights lighter. Because again, I want to. I want to establish, you know, just basic shading overall. That's what you need to do in general, is just make sure your light sources are in the same direction, too. That's also another thing. Like, a lot of early beginner pixel artists will try to do something where. I'll just do a fast demonstration. A lot of early Pixar's will do something where they'll try to do the lighting all over the place. And they'll put shading there because, you know, it's supposed to be there. It's detailed. That's shadows and stuff like that. And... Now that's what it's supposed to look like, you know? It's light, it's shadow, it looks dark. And that's what it's supposed to be. And while that is half true, like obviously it does make it look slightly better. Thing is, it looks incorrect. Like it looks like a balloon. And if you do that for something like an arm, it just looks like a balloon animal. Like, if you do something like this, you'd probably, uh, do, uh, it looks more like a balloon animal than an actual arm, really. And so, you end up, like, making it look like Ruined. Ruined. Yeah, ruined. Hey, Shawnee B, how's it going? Yes, so what you really want to do is instead, you need to pick a light source. So let's erase half this stuff. So what you need to do is pick a light source, an actual light source. So if you're going to make a light, it's best that you choose the direction of where the light. So, if the light is coming from this direction. I'm just gonna make a basic arrow. Light's going this way. That means that all the light is here. That's where all the things are shiny. That's the ball. You know what? Let's put it here and let's fill it there. Now, even now, it just looks overall better because light is hitting this. Like, this is a really shiny light. And this spots the shadow. It's all in one direction. And then, if it's on a ground surface, it would cast a shadow going this way. Because 
no lights going underneath the ball. Like, it's it's not able to pass the ball because that's where the light's not going. So, yeah, I could probably just keep the shadow here. <laughs> Saved. Oh, yeah. And so, you can continue. You're not better yet. Yeah, it's better if you see it. So, you can continue with the darker shadows down here. And it looks even more convincing because the further away from the light it is, the darker the shadow is going to be. But with all four of my palettes, it goes from dark to light because, you know, palettes are set up in that order. So, this will be slightly lighter, slightly darker. And... You can go even further than that because also to give it even more debt the light is also not exactly in the center so there is sometimes an occasion to do things like this and that's when you need to put the very light lightest of the light in one spot so it's nice and small and that's how you get how that's how you make things really shiny because you're seeing the absolute white of the light and not just the not just the fall off of the light and if you really want to you know if you have any extra colors you can push it even further with the highest of highlight the top white now a lot of people will say not to use pure black and pure white in your drawings or pixel art. And that is true to a point, but I do want to add that it's better that you use pixel art. Like, it's better that you use pure black and pure white as a last resort. Like, you know, there's obviously nothing wrong with using pure white. It's your colors. You can color as much as you want. I'm an inker. I will ink. I want pure black ink because fuck that. I don't like it when my inks are uneven, but whatever. Like, you can use pure black in your art, but it's best that you use pure black when it's at the deepest, deepest shadow. So, probably a super thin line. Like, extremely thin. Like, you would probably also do, like, a special dithering where you're, see you're barely seeing the black. And that's the absolute furthest dark. Like, it is the darkest dark possible. And that's where you could use pure black, is at the absolute darkest. And, you know, it works pretty well for such a thing, but only at its absolute darkest and absolute lightest. Like, if, you, if you're if you doing anything in between, it's going to look washed out. It's going to look like, you know, it's been in the sun too long. It's pasty. It looks pale and stuff like that. Or it'll look too black. It'll look too dark. Like... It looks like how my webcam looks actually. I have a I have a white light. I have a freaking white light and I use it for basically heading accurate cards. It's like a white sunlight. And if you're looking at the camera, it's I look washed out. I look like a I look like a ghoul. Like I look stone faced. If I use a yellow light, I would at least look warmer. I'd have warmer colors and my skin wouldn't look so pale and that's kind of just the issue when it comes to white light you'll look washed out and you know there are times and places where the washed out look looks fine like watercolor painting that's always fine with, you know that's always fine if you uh leave out if you leave out paint from watercolor painting it's a good way to have highlights in your painting is leaving out the uh, paint and having like little spots where you don't have color and that's a nice way to just establish highlights with watercolor paint uh let's see you know just inking and stuff like that just leaving it white 
like spots where you can leave it white and you don't cross hatch and things like that that's also a nice way to kind of just highlight stuff and yeah you can also just do other fancy things where you could do things like have a rim light where you'll see the light bouncing off the floor and back up to the ball here and depending on how shiny the ball would be it'll either be the same color as the light or exactly no it probably yeah depending on how shiny the ball will be it'll look like the exact same color as the floor so if I made a floor drawing here yeah we're just gonna vandalize my art right now like it's vandal time so let me just put this here this ain't an accurate shadow but for what we need to do I'm just gonna put it here may like add a little bit more floor so yeah we have our basic you know, location you know what let's add a green background because yes it's a real RGB type of thing yes we're just making a miniature a miniature scene here so you know the lights coming from here you can barely see the light and you can do things like you could have a subtle green like here and that would indicate that the ball is extremely shiny. Like a fast way to indicate that something's really shiny is to have it reflect exactly the color on the ball. And you could do things like have it reflect green like that. Exactly. And you can have it just reflect exactly the color before it turns white. That's also a way to kind of just establish, hey, it's turning green. Because the more reflective something is, the more it's going to look like the color that it's reflecting. So this practically looks like a marble. Like this is as shiny as it can get. This is chrome, practically. Like you're looking at something that's like straight up chrome or something. You could probably do the light like this and then it's a white reflected light. And then the red from the floor would also reflect at the bottom. And as it goes up, it also reflect the green too and you have like the uh, rim light here and it also just looks like a bubble now too like the more reflected it is the uh, more it just ends up looking more transparent which is why uh which is why when people experiment with invisible objects it's a series of mirrors like nothing is invisible really but it can be reflected like that's how invisibility like actually works like you know in physics and stuff like that it reflects light so well that you're seeing exactly what's up above you instead of seeing what's through you and you know adhering to light and shadows and things like that it's actually reflecting what you're seeing like it's reflecting the sunlight and the light particles and all that other physics stuff. And, <clears throat> you know, the sh yeah, the shinier it is, the more reflective it'd be. And obviously, the duller it is, the less reflective it gets. So, you know, you reflect, you put it here, bada boom. And yeah, it probably looks basic, but that's kind of just how that goes. We're seeing just a really dull ball. 
you know, probably see at most a slightly light ball, but nothing crazy shiny. Like, if it's duller, you actually wouldn't even see this shine at most, because it's too dull. It's not like reflecting the apex white light of everything. And, you know, this is the basic sloppy lighting tutorial that I'll do for today, because... <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's kind of just one of those things where it's like, oh, hey, here's how you do pixel lighting. So, and that's a nice crash course into not just doing pixel art, but learning how to light your stuff and render stuff, not look amateur.